I just want to introduce you to lovely, lovely Christian Newman, who co-author of this book, 21 Rituals to Connect with Nature. She also runs Inspiral Group in Cambridge, lovely events group, and they now have a YouTube channel, I believe. Oh, you, ha- you had it anyway, didn't you? But you're, you're did doing more with it. Yeah. Yeah, and she also is the owner of Soulfulness Therapies. So Krisha is going to do a talk for us, and I, I think a meditation as well, honey, am I right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Amazing. Okay, well, you don't need me, so I'm going to mute my mic too, but if you do need me during the course of the thing or you want me to unmute anyone or do anything, just shout because I can just have, you know, have controls and stuff here. Okay, all right, I will mute myself. Take it away, Krisha. Okay, thank you. And it's wonderful to see you all. Uh, It's amazing, actually. Hello, everyone, and welcome. And thank you for being here this evening and connecting with me and connecting with nature. So today, I just wanted to talk about my journey through nature and where where it, it ended up in a book and it's still obviously evolving and one thing I'd say is that if you're expecting anything you know deeply intellectual sorry because my mantra is keep it simple (laughs) and that mantra has been with me since primary school when I heard a teacher saying she's simple (laughs) And I thought, wow, simple, that's me. I love keeping things simple, right? So it was a blessing that this teacher gave me because if something's too complicated, I'm just like, "Mm -mm." it's meant to flow effortlessly, just like nature. Everything flows. And when you're in resistance and it's not flowing, that's when you know that you've got to make changes. And when I was first, I first actually met um, Sunday Times bestselling author, the lovely Teresa Chung, quite a few years ago when she came to speak to us all at Inspiral. And I would never ever have imagined that years later she would invite me to write a chapter in her book. And in fact, when I got the call from Teresa inviting me to write a chapter, I heard the word saying, yes, I'd love to do that. But inside, my heart was pounding. Because up until then, I had only written for a local magazine, for the Inspiral Group, and our blog. So actually writing for something that was going to be published was a huge thing for me. So. For about two weeks before the deadline, I realized that I wasn't in effortless flow. And here I was that on a daily basis, I would connect with nature, but I wasn't doing that because I was doing this. I was coming from my head and not my heart. And when I come from my heart, everything flows, but I was getting in my own way from here. So literally two weeks before the deadline, I hadn't written a thing. And then one afternoon, I received a phone call and it kind of shook me. It was, it was not a pleasant call. And the first thought I had was, I need, I need to go out. I need to walk. I'm blessed that I live just across the road from beautiful woodlands that I I walk in daily and I thought I'll go out I'll I'll walk and I'll talk to the trees and I will just allow the trees to take this energy um, that was very uncomfortable within me and unfortunately I couldn't because I was looking after my stepson at the time and my husband was going out and he was like oh I'm sorry Um, the carer's not coming until later so I had to look after my stepson and I had this feeling inside of me that just wasn't shifting so instead of going for a walk in the woods as I normally would 
I went to my kickboxing class. And after the first two minutes, I was sweating profusely because I'm not the fittest person on the planet. And uh, I could still feel this, this energy within me. And I was thinking, well, I'm, I'm jogging, it's not shifting. And I could feel these tears welling up. And the last thing I wanted to do was burst into tears in my kickboxing class. And in that moment, the instructor opened the doors, the double doors that looked out across a huge playing field. And at the bottom of this playing field was a row of trees. And I stood there for a moment because I thought, what earth is that? What is happening? And I was transfixed because I saw this light. And no word will I, this tree was moving towards me. And in that moment, I kind of looked around thinking, this is weird. Everybody else is jogging. And I was just in my own moment in just looking at this tree that was literally moving towards me. And then I saw this light and the light came all the way through the ground through. I could see the roots of this tree and I could feel this light merging through me and outwards. And I wasn't even aware that my fingers had gone into the Jian Mudra. And so I just stood there in this class, connecting with this tree. And then I heard the tree speak. And I could feel all of this negative emotion that I had held on to, literally being drawn out of my body. And within, I, I, I can't even tell you how long, it seemed like ages that I'd stood there. But in that moment, I felt complete oneness with this tree. Now, I'm a tree hugger. I've always hugged trees. I've always loved trees. I love nature, but I'd never quite experienced anything like this in my entire life. And all of a sudden, I was just filled with this incredible energy. And I kind of came to, looked around and everyone's still jogging and they'd started sort of boxing. And I was like, wow, no one had noticed me. So I thought, well, that's good. So I quickly nipped off to the back of the class, got my phone and started writing down what had happened. And so I, I got home and I looked, I, actually after the class, I did go and hug the tree afterwards. And it was a horse chestnut tree. And the incredible thing is the horse chestnut, the, the symbolism of the horse chestnut is that it dissipates excess energy. It gives you clarity and ignites your intuition. It also removes agitation, which in that moment, I was really agitated. And it's a super conductor. And I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. I was lit, I just, I wanted to write. So I got home and I, I, I started writing my chapter. But even then, a few things, I'm still getting in the way thinking, oh, I need to think about this word. And so before I went to bed that night, I called upon my guides and I asked them for further guidance and to allow all of the words to just flow out from my heart so that I could put this experience into words in a way that people could actually connect with it. Well, what I should have said as well was, could, could you just wait until nine o'clock in the morning? <laughs> because at 
I was woken up. I was wide awake, looked at my phone and I was like, oh, 2.22. And I just started writing and these words just flowed, flowed and flowed and flowed. And then I just sat there, just full of energy until Matt, because I sat there, and it's a bit spooky and you might think I'm a bit weird, but I sat there looking at my husband, Matt, thinking, I'm so excited, I want you to wake up. And literally, well, actually it was 4.22, which was amazing. He suddenly opened his eyes and was like, are you all right? I went, I've written it, I've written it. And he was like, great, that's what you asked for. And finally, it flowed out of your heart and onto paper. So that's the story behind my chapter and how I came about writing it. And I was then blessed because Teresa asked me to research and contribute to further chapters in the book. And whilst I was researching and contributing to other chapters in the book, I then really kind of realized that growing up, there were certain memories that I held dear and still do. And one of them was of my late father. And he had the most amazing ritual. He would get an apple every single day. And he would start with a knife at the top of his apple and he would peel it in the most perfect spiral all the way down. And as a child, I just thought he was amazing. And I was transfixed by the fact that he never broke the skin. And he put so much love and care into peeling his apple. And I tried it as a child and, you know, I must have had like little fat fingers or something because my peel always broke. But I, I even now, when I go to peel an apple, I always think about him with love and I always recall this ritual. And that's really what rituals are. Rituals are repeatable actions that you perform mindfully. So unlike a habit that you, you just get into the habit of doing something, but you're not consciously or mindfully thinking about it. So rituals for me, you know, we perform rituals every single day from brushing our teeth to I make mint tea daily. And that in itself has become a ritual. And I give thanks for the mint. Um, and I, I'm growing mint and I've always loved mint. And it's when you also become aware, you'll probably think, I never realized that I was performing this ritual on a daily basis. And then you become mindful of it. You know, small rituals like cloud watching, you know, who's, who's made shapes out of clouds since childhood. Yeah, I love seeing, <laughs> thank you, I've got hands up there. Um, it's such a beautiful thing to do. And I see, I see dragons, I see angels' wings, and it just brings you that sense of connectedness, that sense of oneness, that sense of peace. Yet it's such a simple thing to do. And of course, as you know, I do simple. So something that I've been doing and that I'd like to share with you is to take you on a virtual nature walk of my own and to also give you something practical and spiritual to take away with you and hopefully you'll want to do this yourselves because for me connecting with nature is really personal and we'll all have our different ways of connecting. So for instance, you no know, gardening. Okay, 
when you when you're out gardening you're actually working with with five catalysts for finding creative brilliance you're working with mindfulness with your heart putting your heart and soul into every single plant you're working with artistic expression which is keeping your brain flexible you're working with movement which gets the energy moving playfulness which releases blocks and of course nature and breathing in that pure creative life force energy and you know for me when i'm looking after a plant i mean i've got plants as you can see in the background that i my house is full of house plants and I, I talk to them, I know Prince, if it's good enough for Prince Charles, it's good enough for me. Um, and I've, I've spoken to the plants since I was a child, probably because nobody else really wanted to listen. <laughs> being the youngest, being the youngest child, you know, they probably heard it all before. And so when it got to me, I was like, I just talk to the plants because they always listen. And something that, that, plants do is they also reflect what's going on within you and actually it was the beginning of of 2020 that i thought wow these plants are really reflecting on what's going on within me because the first three months of this year were actually very difficult months for me I had um, a bad fall, which ended up with severe concussion, and then difficulties after that. And I wasn't really taking great care of myself. And it wasn't until I was looking around me, looking in my garden, that had become overgrown. And the only thing that was truly loving my garden was the amount of slugs that were literally breeding and it wasn't until i suddenly just woke up because nature was showing me what was going on inside and for the first time some of my house plants i mean they're looking gorgeous now but some of my house plants we're looking at dry and dehydrated. And I thought, you're talking, you're telling me that I'm not looking after myself. I'm not naturing myself. And so I took some time out. It was almost as though I knew that lockdown was coming because for three whole months beforehand, I had stayed in and I was quiet and okay. I had severe concussion, but I hadn't connected. And the only thing that I did have was nature around me. I would go for walks and it was nature that was healing me and showing me, you're okay. You're okay. Just allow us to flow through you allow us to show you how to nurture yourself again so i started to create a nature vision board that actually i'd like to share with you and hopefully you can all see it so the general concept once again is really really simple so you take a a board a cork board or a canvas board and you go out for a walk and you just look around you what are you drawn to what's calling you and you'll pick up whatever it is that's calling you from literally you can feel your heart kind of go oh, you're there for me thank you and Whatever you choose 
will have a, a meaning and it will just fill you with joy so let me show you let me show you my board hang on this is one i made earlier da, 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 da. here it comes here it comes hopefully you can see it so okay there's the top of my board and then all the lovely things i don't know can you see it give me a thumbs up if you can see it yay okay so and then we go to the bottom of the board here and there's my luna on driftwood there and there's um some sage and lavender so let me just talk you through my board okay and i look at this so yes i still go out walking every day but this is just this isn't this is my vision not just for me to connect and stay connected with nature but this is my vision for mother earth for our planet and moving forward with joy and so i was going out and collecting things and putting it on my my nature board things that truly mean something to me so when you go out you'll be connecting with the things that mean something to you so I'll, I'll just go over a couple of things then you can ask some questions afterwards but the center of my board is mother earth and she's literally opening up with the light pouring out of her or pouring into her as well we've got butterflies we've got rainbows and underneath the flower there are two flowers that i i really connect with now my flowers are the lotus flower and behind me i don't know if you can see hanging up i've got some sunflowers so they're they're the two flowers that at the moment because everything changes but for me the lotus flower really resonates with me because it journeys the journey begins in the dark and this flower emerges from the mud from the darkness and as it comes up it blooms and blossoms in the light and it seeks and searches the light that merges with it and it it blossoms and blooms into the most incredible flower and you know i've had i've had moments in my life quite a few moments in my life where i resonate with the lotus flower where there have been times of darkness but the light has always shone and i've always felt it i've always had that faith in the light and it's always pulled me up out of that darkness so that's my reference to the lotus flower here um i've got little things on here like i give thanks to the earth for its bounty its protection and its support Blessed be the earth and all who walk upon it. And at the top there, I ask the green spirit of the universe to bless my vision in the name of earth and all of nature. And here I've got herbs that I connected with. And when I mean connect with it, when you choose a herb, such as here I've got lavender and sage. Now, many years ago, I trained as an aromatherapist. So plants uh, were, were so uh, special to me. I, I love plants and aromatherapy was my, was my life, my joy at the time until I got meningitis and lost my sense of smell. 
So then I moved on to other modalities. But when I got my sense of smell back, aromatherapy was still very much a part of me. Now, lavender, for me, when I touch lavender, even now, you know, without touching, I can smell it. I can, I can feel it. I can sense lavender. And it's almost as though I merge with it. Now, lavender, the magical qualities of lavender are peace and tranquility and harmony and sage you know when you breathe in sage you're breathing in its wisdom you're breathing in fertility because that's what it symbolizes you're breathing in purification because we use sage for cleansing rituals so when i look at my board and all of the things that i connect with that have helped me throughout my life it's there it's part of me it reflects part of me and i just i i feel happy and i have the vision that we are moving out of the chapter that we're currently in into better times into a time where we have been shown that nature is our savior that when we were out we were polluting the earth and this time has shown us that take us out of the equation the dolphins come and swim in the canals in venice the waters turn crystal clear and that our mother can breathe and she's she is doing exactly what she's always done and she is there for us and i just I pray, and this is my vision, that I pray that her light fills us all and that when we go back, that we don't return to normality, whatever that was, that we return with our deep connection to nature. And having things like this keeps us keeps us in that moment as well it's it's our reminder so i'm just looking at the time al i know we've got 30 minutes so let me just take you so i just put put my board take, down take your time honey yeah that's okay um so i just want to take you on a meditation and it's to connect with the earth and to give thanks to the earth for all that it's providing us with. So, if you want to sit comfortably, okay, wiggle around. I was going to say as well, feel free to, if you, if you want to turn If you want to have a drink, like me, it's very, I'm in my loft. So, <laughs> mm. Okay, how are you all doing? Okay, just wiggle around, get comfortable. Okay, all good. I see someone clicking their fingers there. My daughter does that. <laughs> I can hear it. <laughs> I know you're on mute, but I can still hear your fingers clicking. Okay. Ready? Okay, so settle. Settle yourself comfortably and gently close your eyes. I'm just going to turn this off for a minute because it's shining on me. Okay. That's it. 
and gently breathe in for the count of four. Hold for the count of four. And exhale for the count of four. And just become aware of your physical body and any sensations within. If you just need to move or wriggle, just get yourself into that comfortable position and just become of any, aware of any sensations within. And again, gently breathe in for the count of four. Hold for four. And gently exhale for the count of four. Now imagine a beautiful green mist rising up from the ground, radiating from all the growing things around you. Just allow your breath to flow gently. Each time you inhale, visualize that mist of vibrant green energy flowing up through your body into your lungs, filling every cell. Bringing you a feeling of comfort and relaxation. You are one. And as you exhale, allow this vibrant green energy to transmute any tension, stress or worry that you might be feeling. And gently breathe. Gently allow this energy that you are one with to sink slowly and gently into the soft earth below. Breathe in the warmth of the earth's energy that is cradling you. Gently breathe in, hold, and gently exhale. Feel the energy of growth and nourishment that vibrates in the earth. Imagine your energy expanding through roots and stems. Explore the magical systems of minerals, crystals, nutrients 
and the sparkling clear waters. Sense the feeling of vitality of life flowing effortlessly, joyfully, creating in abundance throughout the earth. Gently breathe in the vitality of the fertile life that surrounds you and flows effortlessly through you. Now offer the earth your gift of gratitude. And slowly and gently bring your awareness back up through the soil returning to your physical body. Gently breathe in for the count of four. Hold for four. And exhale for four. Gently wriggle your toes, wriggle your fingers and enjoy a really, really lovely, good stretch and gently open your eyes. Thank you. Thank you, lovely. So uh, Addie says, huge well done, Krisha, you're great, uh, amazing, Thank and you. I'm totally chilled after that meditation. <laughs> Rachel Thank says, so love much. that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it was wonderful. Thank you so Thank much, you. Alexandra. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Krisha, for, for coming on and, and sharing your wisdom with us. And and giving us a giggle tonight. I think we all needed the upliftment after this yeah. week. <laughs> well, you can always wanna... count on me to keep it <laughs> faithful and simple. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I just want to remind everyone that you can get your copy of 21 Rituals to Connect with Nature. I think, how many did you write in here in the end, Chrissy? You wrote about seven or eight of these, didn't you? She, she, wrote, she wrote bloody half the book. So... <laughs> <laughs> beautiful Ooh. so a lot of these are actually christian congratulations ghost written a lot of them um and um yeah they're all really practical you can actually do a lot of them from inside the house as well which is really nice so i think it, it came out it, it was very absolutely. prophetic the date yeah, that we, we launched it wasn't it that it came out just in time for lockdown so that's wonderful yeah. um we but, were finding it really hard to actually yeah. get outside yeah. all of these rituals kept coming up and they were all indoors and we had to actually say to the editor at the time, well, you know, you might suffer with agoraphobia. You might be in a prison cell. You might be in a hospital. You might be in a care home. You might not be able to get outside. And all of these rituals kept coming up indoors. And we were like, we've got to get outside now. <laughs> <laughs> but it was pretty, as you said, prophetic, wasn't it? For yeah, our times really, now. really needed at the moment. It, you couldn't have timed it better. Um, Wonderful. Well, we'll, we're going to let you all go so you can go and continue to relax and and drift off to sleep. Watch the sunset. Sticky willies and (laughs) watch the sunset as you fall asleep. Um, Krisha, have you got any parting words before we all go? Oh, 
Oh, do you know just what? remind okay. everyone of your website and everything and how they can find Inspiral and Okay, so Inspiral is www.inspiralgroup.co.uk and my website is www.soulfulnesstherapies.co.uk and something that I say in the morning um, that is, is a ritual. So as I open the curtains and I allow the light to fill me and I say today I embody the light of the sun and reflect it in all that I do. So that's my, little, my little morning opening the curtains ritual but bit of sun gazing thank you lovely oh thank thank you so much everyone for joining us happy friday have a beautiful beautiful weekend yeah see you all soon good luck having a a, a little bit of adventure out too